Have you ever received an impression that you're to act on, to go minister to somebody, speak to someone? How do you know if that's the Lord or not? Tune into today's broadcast, and we're going to share with you how you can determine those impressions are from God. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Welcome to today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. My name is Greg Moore, and we're in the middle of a series called Living a Supernatural Life. Uh, God's got more for you than what you've been experiencing. And the things that you read in the Gospels, where you see signs, wonders, and miracles being done by Jesus, the things that you see in the New Testament, in, in the book of Acts, that the early church operated in, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus is a supernatural Lord. In fact, listen, my brother and sister, do you know how you got saved? Those of you who are saved, those of you who are watching, you're born again, do you know how that happened? You had to believe in the supernatural. You had to believe that God raises dead people, Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you confess with your mouth, if you believe in your heart that uh, that uh, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So the, it, the very entrance into the kingdom of God, you had to believe in the supernatural. You had to believe that God raised up dead people. Man, that's, what, that, that's amazing. And, and yet you're struggling with the fact that that uh, that God could heal your body or could bless you financially or help you in a relationship. Man, guys, you're believers. You know, what do, what do believers do? Believers believe. You're, you're a believer. And what do you believe? You, 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 you entered into the kingdom of God. You, you became born again believing that God raises dead people. Praise God. Well, if he can raise dead people, if he could raise Jesus from the dead, he can sure turn around your dead situation. So I just want to encourage you, uh, you, when you, when you were born again, you entered into a supernatural life and way of living. Now, let's get with the program. Let's believe that God, that not only uh, God raised Jesus from the dead, but he can raise up your dead situation. And there are impossible situations that you'll be facing in life that the resurrected Christ who lives on the inside of you is greater than. He's greater than, than stage four uh, cancer. He's greater than a doctor's negative report. He's greater than uh, some negative financial report. Uh, that w- he's greater than, than whatever is going on with uh, your son or daughter who's operating as a prodigal. He's greater, my uh, brother and sister. And we, and we have to factor in that, that, okay, I'm not denying that this situation looks impossible, but man, I've got the God on the, who lives on the inside of me that raised, that raised up from the dead. He, he raises dead people. He heals the sick. He, he heals the blind. He clean, cleanses the lepers. And he gave that power to you and me. Man, we are a supernatural people. <laughs> we're, we're part of a supernatural family. I mean, listen, you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. You, you believe that he died for your sins and God raised him from the dead. But did you witness that event? Yet you still believe? You believe that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, have you ever seen the book? And yet you still believe? You believe that when you die, you're going to heaven. 
Have you ever been there? And yet you still believe? So let me get this straight. You believe in an event that happened that you didn't witness, a book your name is written in that you've never seen, and a place that you're going to when you die that you've never that you've never been to, and yet you still believe? How long are you going to believe those things? Listen, my brother and sister, your very eternal uh, life and, and existence is at stake to what you believe, believe, and you're believing things that seem to be impossible, and yet you're sweating a little bit of uh, financial, uh, you know, provision that you haven't seen yet, or or health that you haven't seen yet, or relational uh, harmony that you haven't seen yet. Listen, you're a believer, and if you're going to live a supernatural life, uh, we the impossible situations turn around when we believe that the God that's on the inside of us is greater than whatever that impossible situation dictates to us. And so I just you know, I just encourage you, we, we're living a supernatural life, and it all starts with you believing. Well, let me tell you uh, some funnies. These are real grandchildren funnies that I have. So uh, my youngest... Uh, I mean, my oldest grandson, when he was a lot younger, was riding in the back seat of the car with his aunt, and he started to mess with the cup holder. And his aunt asked him to stop messing with it because he might break it. And so, so, uh, so he stops for a little bit, and then he starts messing with it again. And then uh, her husband, my oldest son, turned around. Uh, who's driving, and he told he told uh, Jonah to stop it and obey Tanya, and and Jonah responds. He said, "I'm not doing anything. My fingers are doing doing something, and my fingers are in trouble." <laughs> well, that's funny. Then the same little guy, when he was about four years old, uh, we went to his house, and and I sat down, just got to his house, and uh, they lived in Houston, and we lived in North Texas, and, and uh, he jumped up on my lap, and I said, Jonah, how you doing? He said, he said, well, I'm doing okay, but he said, you know, well, one of my, one of my goldfish died, and, and I said, oh, man, I'm sorry about that. He said, yeah, the deadness killed it. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Then, uh, then my, uh, my oldest son and I we went out playing golf, uh, golf one time, and and we took uh, his daughter Addie and then and then one of my other daughters Madeline with us, and we were of course they they love to go golf with us because they like to drive the uh, the golf carts you know and so but they were probably I don't know six years old, and they didn't really drive we we they sit in our laps and we let them drive at the time. As they got older, they got they got to drive it on their own, but uh, so we got to one of walked up one of the tea boxes, and Addie looks down at the two at the two stone markers on the tea box. You know, I think one of them said, you know, this was a uh, tea number one, and and then this was tea box number two or something like that. And uh, and she said, Daddy, look, they buried two little babies here. <laughs> Oh man, that is funny. What what children, uh, what what funny things children do. So um, we're we're talking today about um, the different flows of the spirit. Uh, one of the ways to operate uh, consistently in the supernatural is to recognize the different flows of the spirit. John 7, 37 through 39, uh, I'm paraphrasing this, but Jesus said, out of your belly will flow. When you receive the Holy Spirit, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And this spake he of the Spirit uh, whom they would receive. And so he said, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, there's rivers of living water going to be flowing out of you. And and then if you compare that 
uh, John 7, 38, 30, 39, with Ezekiel 47, 9, it, said where, it says wherever the rivers go or wherever they flow, there'll be healing and there'll be life. So what is, what is, he, what is he telling us there? Um, first of all, in, in John chapter 4, uh, he says that when you're born again, when you receive eternal life, it's, it's a well that's on the inside of you. But when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, when you receive uh, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, then it's the rivers that flow out of you that bless others. And then, then in Ezekiel 47, 9, he said, wherever the rivers go, there's going to be healing in life. So what do we learn from that? If you'll, if you'll learn to the different flows of the Spirit and cooperate with that, wherever the river goes, healing flows. Wherever the river goes, the gifts of the Spirit operate on that river. And so there are three primary flows of the Spirit. In yesterday's broadcast, we talked about the flow of love. Jesus was moved with compassion, and he healed their sick. If we'll just move with the flow of love or the flow of compassion, when he's, when he's moving upon us or moving through us, if we'll move with that, then we'll see the sick healed. And I gave you a couple of examples of, of how that happens. Listen, the, the compassion of the Lord is, is flowing. It's flowing through me right now to tell you, man, God loves you. And, he, and, and there's somebody sitting on the sideline because you lost a loved one that you've prayed for. And God's just encouraging me to tell you, get off of the bench, get back out on the field, follow the flow of love, and, and other people will be healed, saved, and delivered. Uh, and, in fact, you'll bring joy to your loved one who's gone on to be with the Lord by you not quitting your race before your time. Praise God. Get off, get off of the bench. Stop living in that place of grief. Let compassion flow through you again. God's going to heal your heart. Hallelujah. The second flow that I want to talk about is the flow of light. And so in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. But then in verse 7, it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And that word fellowship is really interesting. It means to share. It means communion. It means to make a contribution or distribution. And so it, what is he saying here? If you and I walk in the light that God gives to us, we're going to have something to contribute or distribute to people. This is another flow of the Spirit, is the flow of light. And light can come in several different ways. Um, light can come to you through a vision. It can come through a dream. It can come through a prophetic word. I mean, an angel could talk to you. I've had an angel get in my car one time in my life and talk to me and bring revelation to me. And, and I, you know, those are all really kind of supernatural things. It, light can come to you uh, through somebody teaching the word, like I'm sharing the word with you right now, or through your pastor. Um, light can come to you through your mate. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit sounds a lot like Janice to me. <laughs> and so, you know, it can come. God can speak to me through a friend that loves me, that will speak into my life. Um, there, there are lots of different, you know, people. Somebody can give me a prophetic word. In fact, later in this, in this uh, series, I'm going to talk to you about how to judge prophetic words because as you begin to walk in the supernatural, uh, you have to understand that not everything that everybody tells you that says, thus saith the Lord, uh, is, is absolutely the Lord. You have to judge the things that people tell you. Uh, so 
uh, you can get you can get light as you're reading the Bible. Man, that's a great way to get light and revelation. Light can come to you in in various number of ways. Um, sometimes it just comes as a as an inward uh, desire or an impression that hits your mind. And so there's a lot of different ways that light can come. And so what is, a, what is our responsibility as Christians when an impression hits our mind or, or, or we, we're hearing a preacher or a teacher communicate the word and, it, and light comes to us, uh, an impression comes to us from that, that we need to act on this, do this, um, take this step of action, or what? what is our responsibility? We need to check out that light that we receive and see how it lines up with the Word of God. And so um, what I usually, what I typically do is I'll go to 1 Corinthians uh, 13. If I get an impression that I'm supposed to do something, um, or I have a somebody come... I have a vision or I have a dream or a prophetic word or just an impression that comes to me or just some something that I'm I think that the word of God is saying I'm going to I'm going to check that out with with two passages of scripture 1 Corinthians 13 it says uh, uh, verses 4 through 8 love is patient love is kind it doesn't envy doesn't boast it's not proud it's not rude you know it always believes always hopes always trusts. Then in Galatians uh, chapter 5, 22 and 23, is talking about the fruit of the Spirit, which is the nature of Jesus that each of us has. I, I take every impression that I receive and I run it through the screen of, you know, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, um, you know, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, meekness, uh, long suffering, all those things, I'm I'm going self control. I run, I run. If I whatever impression I'm receiving, I just run it through the screen of First uh, Corinthians thirteen four through eight, and Galatians five twenty two and twenty three, the fruit of the spirit. And if it doesn't violate those things, which are the character and nature of Jesus, then I just act on it. What do you have to lose if it doesn't? If it doesn't violate the Word of God, start stepping out on the light that you have. Well, I don't want to miss it. Well, that's the problem. Already, We already talked about how you've got to attack pride and fear. And so, guys, this flow of light is powerful. And light comes, like I said, it comes a lot of different ways. But um, I'll share one or two examples with you about that. Uh, years ago, I was... Just I was in business and I was just driving my van uh, in the southwest part of Houston, and I it, we were in, in a lot of traffic, so I turned to the right to try to avoid the traffic, and I drove down this road. And on the left side of the road was was some apartments. On the right side were some uh, was just a grassy knoll or a hill, which you didn't see very many hills in Houston. And on the top of this hill, this uh, hippie looking guy, long hair, looked like he was, you know, maybe on drugs or something. He, he was on one knee with his, with his hand, one hand up uh, in the air like this. And, and I thought, well, that's weird. And I heard an impression, go join yourself to that man. Of course, you see, that was what God spoke to Philip about to go uh, to the Ethiopian eunuch. But I, it was like, I, I, no, Lord, you know, I don't have I don't argue with that anymore, but those impressions. But I, at the time, I just said, "Lord, you know, I don't have, I, I don't have ministry to hippies or or druggies." I said, "You know, that's not that's not my ministry. I'm not a redneck, but I'm not, you know, a hippie." And I and and I just kept driving, and then I heard stronger. I said, "Go join yourself to that man," and then I argued a little bit more. Finally, I heard a real strong, almost an audible voice. So. I turned my van around and parked in the apartments and then walked across uh, to where this man was was uh, on this hill. And, and I said, I'm going to show you, Lord, I don't have a ministry to hippies. And so I just grabbed his hand, 
and uh, I, I reached out my hand to him and grabbed his hand. I said, hey, my name is Greg. I was just driving by. I noticed you on this hill, and I just wanted to come by and tell you that God loves you, and he's got a wonderful plan for your life. I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> I have never met the guy. And he looked at me, just stared at me. And I and I, then I said, well, uh, and, and all of a sudden, when I take the, when I took the step to do that, all of a sudden, I heard, uh, tell him that I know that um, he he just got he just lost his job, and tell him that I know that he, his car got repossessed last night, and tell him that I know that he just got an eviction notice in the apartments across the street. <laughs> I said, Lord. You know, really? And it's like, well, what do I have to lose? I'm already out there, you know? And so I, I, I kind of chickened out a little bit. I just, I, I said, I said, did you, did, did you just lose your job recently? And he looked at me and stared at me. And then I said, and, and did you get your car repossessed last night? And then he starts, tears start coming down his face. And then I, then I got bold. I said, I said, I, I, I think God's telling me that you, got an eviction notice out of your apartments uh, across the street. And he, he looked at me through tears just rolling down his face. He said, how did you know that? And I said, well, I'm in relationship with, uh, with Jesus Christ who died for your sins, and he cares about you. He knows you. And he stopped me in the middle of my business and turned me around and told me to come here and pray for you. And he said, he said, I, w- I want you to know something, mister. He said, last, he said, uh, a week ago, I fell off, I'm in construction, and I fell off a roof, and I went to get, ha- had to get, have surgery on my leg, and he showed me his other knee. He was kneeling on one knee. The other knee, it, he had a, a, a hole in his jeans before holy jeans were fashionable, and he he wrote he showed me. He said I had surgery on this knee. When I came back, uh, they they uh, fired me. They told me I, I I couldn't work for him because I didn't. It's going to take too long to recover. And he said last night I got my car uh, repossessed. And he said I walked out this morning, and and I had an eviction notice uh, outside of my apartment door. And I walked across the street, and and I just knelt down, and I said, God, if you're real, show yourself to me, or I'm going to take my life. And, he, and, and then he said, three minutes later, you walked up. And, and uh, well, this guy, his name was Billy, and uh, praise God, he got born again. He got filled with the Spirit. Uh, he came to Lakewood Church with us. We were going to Lakewood Church when John, where John Osteen pastored Joel's dad, and uh, and man, he got my wife's car. <laughs> and uh, of course, my wife got I gave, gave her another. We got her another car. But all of that happened, guys, because I was just available to follow the light that God gave me. And Billy, that was his name. Instead of taking his life, Billy, uh, Billy got saved. He got filled with the Spirit. He was became part of a church. He got a new job. He got a, a new car. Uh, he, he became a disciple of Jesus, all because uh, somebody was yielded to the Spirit and just said, Lord, I'm available for you. If you impress me with light, I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to worry about my pride or fear that I'm going to miss it. Uh, Billy didn't, I didn't have time or he had no opportunity to hear the word of God. Now he needed to hear the word of God, but, but there was a gifts of the spirit. It was a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom that, that God gave me to go join myself to him, to pray for him and be available to those words of knowledge. That, that brought him to a, a living relationship with the, uh, a true relationship with the living God. My brother and sister, there are so many Billies out there like that. 
that will never even hear the Word of God, but that need uh, bro Christians, that need brothers or sisters who know the Lord, who will step out and follow those impressions so that and follow the flow of light so that the fl where the flow of light is, the gifts operate. I'm encouraging you. Step out. Don't let pride and fear stop you. Live a supernatural life and watch and see how God will change others' lives. Thanks for being a part of today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. Today's teaching, Living a Supernatural Life, is available in a 10-disc CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and 4K video. Also today, when you order Living a Supernatural Life in either CD, DVD, or USB, Pastor Greg will give you a free copy of his book, Flowing in the Supernatural. In this book, you will discover how to recognize the gifts of the Spirit, exercise spiritual gifts in personal and corporate settings, and unlock the hidden power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Go to gregmore.com and get your free copy today. You know, I'd love to have you join with me and be a partner with Greg Moore Ministries. Uh, we are reaching a lot of people. I get testimonies all the time of people being healed, saved, delivered, their marriages healed, and, it's, and, and you're helping me to do that. If you'll partner, consider partnering with me, I'm gonna send you uh, a bundle of product. Uh, if you'll just con connect with me, gregmore.com, become a partner today. If you've been blessed by today's teaching, we would like you to consider partnering with Greg Moore Ministries. Your partnership will help expand this broadcast around the world to give people the opportunity to grow in wisdom, Christ-likeness, and grace. Go to gregmoore.com and become a partner today. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmoore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702 Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today. Join us again tomorrow for more Wisdom for Living. The gifts of the Spirit, the supernatural, healing, uh, miracles, uh, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, all of these things He's given to you and, and me if we'll just simply believe, if we'll just simply step out and stop making excuses of why we can't do it. I'm telling you, my brother and sister, you can do it. God believes in you. He's invested himself in you. And he's called me to equip you and empower you to function in the full inheritance that you have in Christ. You have the word of God. You've got the name of Jesus. You've got the blood of Jesus, the gifts of the Spirit. You've got the nature of Jesus, the authority of Jesus. Now it's time for us to get off of our, our blessed assurance and get out and do something with it. Praise God. That's tomorrow on Wisdom for Living.